Now what's in the box? Hey guys, welcome back to Dinner and a Movie. We're here in Park City, Utah, finishing up the last little bit of the Sundance Film Festival 2015. While we've been here at Sundance, we became kind of philosophical what really is a film festival if not just a bunch of people watching a lot of movies. Now, that's something that you don't have to pay a lot of money and come to Utah to accomplish. Uh, you can do that at home from the safety of your own couch. Most of us just call that marathoning. It's just like a festival except for we can wear pajamas. So this month, instead of featuring a specific film here on the column, I'm going to be showcasing a dish that you can make at home that is going to be worthy of any marathon session. Second only to popcorn, nachos are the quintessential movie watching food. They're fast, they're cheap, they're good, and best of all, they're relatively impossible to screw up. All you need to make nachos are chips and cheese. With those two elements, you have nachos. One of the great things about nachos is, in essence, they are the blank canvas of the food world. You can add just about anything you want to nachos. For the nachos we're making, we're adding chicken, tomatoes, avocado, refried beans, and sour cream. But you can add anything you want, that's the great thing about nachos. You could add jalapenos, ground beef, guacamole, green onions, black beans, red onions, salsa, shredded beef, really just about anything you want. Although it's quick and easy to make nachos in the microwave, in my house we always do it in the oven. It might take a little longer, but I think the nachos turn out a lot better, so we're going to need a cookie sheet. Now before we do anything else, we're going to line that with tin foil. The reason we do this is strictly to make cleanup easier when we're done. Not that I think that any of you out there actually need me to tell you how to assemble nachos, but I'm going to show you anyway. First we need a base layer of chips. And then cover that with a healthy amount of shredded cheese. On top of that cheese, we're going to add a second layer of chips. The reason we do this is because every time you've ever had nachos, there is always that layer at the bottom that has no cheese and no toppings, also known as the disappointment layer. By making two layers, you're going to greatly reduce the risk of that happening. Now we start adding our toppings. First off, I put down my chicken. There's nothing special about this chicken. This is a $7 rotisserie chicken I bought at a hot deli counter and just ripped up with my hands. After that goes the tomatoes the avocado, and finally, in my house, no tray of nachos is complete without a lot of refried beans. The easiest way I've ever found to do this is just dropping it on in bite-sized chunks from a spoon. Top it all off with as much cheese as you feel necessary. And go right into the oven. I had my oven set at 350, and I left them in there for about 7 minutes. Plating is super simple. Nachos go on plate, topped with sour cream. Oh, you know you want it. <laughs> 